All right, we're here at Cedia 2023 at the Paralyson area where we've been doing some incredible demos. That's what we're gonna be talking about in today's video. Hey folks, I'm Gene Delisalo with Audio Hawks. We're here with Dan Romer from Perilous, and how you doing, my friend? Great, great, thanks. thanks Dude, for you, in. you, I thought you were playing some voodoo in this room. Okay, I came in, I sat down to listen to these speakers. They're the S70s Limited Edition. I'm like, where are the subs? There has to be something going on in here. I went over, I actually walked over to the subs over there because the amount of bass we were getting from these speakers was almost unbelievable. Then when I noticed that the subs weren't working, I had to go and check the electronics to see if there were any tone controls. There were no freaking tone controls no. on this amplifier. No. Why don't you give us a rundown of what makes this speaker tick? Because I have S7Ts, as you guys know, in my reference system in my family room, and they're great speakers. But these things are like next level with the amount of bass we're getting out of them, just the focus, everything. And as we turned it up, it just started sounding better and better. Yeah, so the S7 Limited started as just a simple request from engineering to make a carbon fiber version of the S7T. And uh, Eric and I kind of talked about it and we're like, well, we have some ideas. And we came back um, to the team and we said, you know what, let's do something a little special on the existing S7. Take the DNA that we have and just make it a little bit better. And part of that you already hit on was was the base. So we, uh, we took, I'm going to grab the driver right now, actually we took the same diaphragm and suspension system that exists in the existing S7, but redesigned the motor structure. Uh, it's a lower inductance, higher excursion, um, also remapped the, the uh, shorting rings and the heat sinks on the outside. So it's got better thermal management and um, better uh, dynamics, better distortion. Um, but part of that then is taking that, putting it in a slightly larger cabinet, remapped crossover, and you get 2 dB roughly from 20 to 80 hertz, so you all gain. Well, let me tell you something, guys. This is a pretty large room. You know, it's, it's a difficult room because there's a lot of echo in here, and you put some acoustic treatments to deal with that. But the, the articulation of the bass, it wasn't just about deeper bass, louder bass. It was just the bass was so tight and controlled. It was almost like you EQ'd it. There's no EQ, EQ going on no, here, no is EQ. there? No, it's all in the tuning of the box and the design of the drivers. Yeah, there's just it's a very linear sounding speaker. We, these are some serious electronics. Can you talk a, bit, a little bit about the electronics that you're using here? So um, we've actually been using Audio Flight for quite a few shows. This is the FLS 10. Um, it probably puts out 350 watts into the four ohm driver, so not a ton of power, but plenty to get them going. They're 92 dB efficient. Um, and then really just the Orlec uh, Aries G2, we're streaming Rune. We got our Rune Rock in the back room, and that's it. Just that simple. Well, when he talks about 350 watts, this is real 350. I looked at the literature on this amp. It's got a 2 kVA transformer, like almost 300,000 microfarads of storage capacity. It's fully differential from input to output. None of this fake balance crap. This is some real serious electronics from Italy, right? It's imported Correct. from Italy. Yep. So let's talk a little bit more about the S7Ts, not just the base, but you got some serious crossover hardware here. Yeah, let's so go over part this of, a little part bit. Part of the redesign was remapping uh, the crossover. So one of the first areas I attacked was how to get more out of the low frequency. Part of it was the driver, part of it was the cabinet, then the other part is the efficiency of the, the crossover. So these wow. inductors are now 1.5 millimeter uh, diameter wire and so that that equates to what insertion loss you get these have very little insertion loss so every little bit you can squeak out crossover cabinet driver equates to that extra output then the next level is the the one percent on every component that's the tolerances we use on them and then the the final swing is when we bring them to the US and that's the only product we'll bring into the US at this point uh, we'll put them on the clipo we'll do the the near field scanner, mm -hmm. which is about a 12 hour test. We'll pair match them to 0.5 dB. Wow. Um, and then we'll certify each one 
and give the battery of uh, measurements from the clipper report to the to the person that buys them. That's awesome. Kind of like a birth certificate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So just the devil's in the detail when you look at this crossover. I mean, look at the resistors that they're using. They're not just the standard sta sandcaster, 100 watt. <laughs> 100 watt. And like he said, 1% parts. I'm sure you did a Monte Carlo analysis to get the tolerances so tight. And that's yeah, why exactly. Use... In some of the, in, especially in the DPC array, the tolerances are super critical. So that yeah. demands the 1%. In some of the other areas, it's maybe not necessarily required, but for this model, we just went 1% across the board just to make sure it's as tight as possible. And what that translate in, in terms of like layman's terms is you get incredibly precise stereo imaging, especially when you're sitting in the center, equidistant between the speakers. Even in this room, which wasn't perfect, I was getting a very strong phantom center. I was getting really good imaging. I was hearing the width of the sound stage. We were listening to Ghost Rider. We were listening to Dominic Fia May. We were cranking the snot out of these speakers. You were worried we were going to overdrive. Yeah, they, they were playing it loud. <laughs> I'd never heard the speaker overdrive. I'd never heard them compress or distress. Yeah. Of course, the amplifier was incredible, too. I was really impressed with the amplifier. Basically, what you have here is an over-designed, over-engineered speaker. My kind of speaker, my Audi Hulk's kind of speaker. I like when stuff is over-engineered and over-designed. Great, yeah. Yeah, and that was the goal. I mean, what we were going for is... Uh, what we learned on the S7 project, or the S series project as a whole, and apply those, those small little things. Okay, I learned this, I learned that, let's put it, put it into this, and let's just make a speaker that much better. And, and this is it, right here. Well, you also re-engineered the base plate and the, and the yeah. feed. You want to talk a little bit about yeah, that? Yeah, sure. Um, actually, worked with uh, Dave Morrison at Isoacoustics, great guy, and uh, they have a wonderful technology, the, the guy of... Uh, foot and they worked with us to develop our own just for the limited edition um, and that's what you see here this is an early prototype I'm holding in my hands but uh, essentially the same function um, we put that uh, they come assembled with the isoacoustics foot on it um, that and we did a thicker base so I think it's a 50 pound steel base right now so just to make it that more secure just again part of the over engineering just to make it as mm -hmm. good as it can be in every facet. So these are carbon fiber. Are there two different finish options on these? Uh, carbon fiber and carbon fiber. Carbon, yeah. Oh, yeah. so you could have it in any finish you want as long as it's carbon exactly. fiber. <laughs> so what's the retail on these? These will be 30 grand. 30 pair. grand. Yeah, and they come in the flight case. So guys, when you think about it, when you go to these audio shows, there's companies that sell cables that cost more than these speakers, and there's some serious engineering. I would say that this pushes the envelope of what you could do in a passive speaker. The only way to go up from here is to go active, and I'm waiting for you to come up with some active speaker designs. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> it's a challenge today. Yeah, I, love, I like those challenges. Awesome. Yeah. Well, we had a great demo experience here. Guys, if you like the video, please hit the thumb up, hit the subscribe. Don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audioholics. We appreciate your support. You get direct access to me if you want to suggest video topics. And until next time, my friends, keep listening.